This is Sarah Al Suhaimi. She is the chair of the Tadawal, which is the Saudi stock exchange. She's here from Riyadh. We're delighted that she was able to join us from Bloomberg Invest. Saudi Arabia has fast become one of the world's fastest changing societies. And everything that you see happening, that you've probably read about, women driving in Saudi Arabia for the first time in decades, movies returning to theaters in Saudi Arabia for the first time in decades, are the result of Vision 2030. This is the grand plan conceived by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to modernize and in many respects liberalize Saudi society and the Saudi economy. And as you might imagine, the stock market plays a critical role in the latter half of that equation. And so Sarah, let me begin with this. You have been tasked with a key objective of the Crown Prince's vision, which is to build a deep, liquid capital market that can attract foreign investment and regional listings, as well as facilitate trading and access to publicly listed equities. How's it going? Um, first of all, I'm really delighted to be here and um, very uh, happy to be um, speaking about a subject that's very dear to my heart, which is opening up our market to foreign investors. This has been a dream for many people for a very long time, and uh, we uh, always struggled with execution. Um, as you mentioned, Vision 2030 gave us uh, the full support to actually execute um, on this. Um, the Saudi market, for uh, those of you who um, are not very familiar, is the largest market in the Middle East. Uh, uh, it also comprises of, 50, it's almost 50% of all GCC markets in terms of market cap and 80% uh, of liquidity. Uh, we are uh, top 10 uh, of emerging markets in the world, both in market cap and liquidity. So uh, our aim and what the vision uh, uh, objective is, is to become the stock exchange of the region. And that's what we're working on. Um, we realize it's a journey. This journey uh, started in 2015, uh, where we had zero foreign investors in Saudi Arabia. Um, when I joined um, as the chair of the stock exchange early last year, uh, we had 50 QFIs registered to trade in Saudi Arabia. Today, uh, we have 280 already registered with 200 on the way. And we do realize that this will accelerate faster as uh, the implementation of um, us uh, being part of the emerging markets starts, uh, which was uh, one of the great outcomes of the reforms that we have been doing uh, in the market uh, in the past uh, two years. It may seem for many people self-evident, but I'll ask anyway. Why was it so important for Saudi Arabia to be included in the emerging market indices managed by FTSE Russell mm -hmm. and then subsequently by MSCI? Um, of course, it's very, very important. We, wa we wanted to make sure that uh, foreign investors have uh, easy and transparent access to Saudi because we want to be closer to the world. We want our market to become more mature. mature. Uh, we want to uh, have more institutional uh, investors. And um, the uh, being of uh, the emerging market uh, indices gives also a chance uh, for investors to discover undiscovered, uh, the last of undiscovered markets, which is the access to the Middle East through uh, the uh, Saudi market. And, um, you know, we are, um, as I mentioned, uh, quite big in, uh, in that region. This year, um, our market has increased uh, approximately 9% to date, while emerging markets index was down 13%. So there are a lot of opportunities, and our job in the stock exchange is to make sure that investors have um, um, access, uh, transparency, and investor protection. And that's what we've worked on with uh, the regulator, the Capital Market Authority, and other um, we, ha we have a chart of the Tadawal All Shares Index. We can show that to you as I ask you the next question, Sarah, which is if you were to go back to 2015 mm -hmm. when you had no foreign investors yes. 
And if you contemplate what you've done thus far and where you need to be, however many years in the future, if that's from zero to 100, where are you today? Um, we're somewhere in this journey. We do realize is that- Is it 30, is it 50, is it um, 70? Major milestones in terms of market structure has been done already. And that was a direct result of the very serious effort uh, Saudi Arabia has done to uh, open up its market. Big part of this uh, was uh, us actually listening to investors. Uh, we went on roadshows, uh, my colleagues and I, uh, all over the world, talked to asset managers, asset owners, uh, brokers, custodians, understood what does it require uh, to become uh, an emerging um, uh, part of the emerging market uh, indices. And from that, we have developed the list of changes, many technical, many uh, in the regulation, and all these have been implemented. So we, we have um, gone, uh, uh, done um, a lot of this, uh, almost everything that we need to uh, to uh, to be part of the emerging markets, and the result was that we were included, and implementation now is there. However, we do understand that this is not where things stop, because um, as I mentioned today, we have 280 qualified investors in the market. We have 200 in the pipeline, but obviously there are much more in the world for that and we're getting ready for them. So one of the major things that we're gonna, um, we're very, very serious about is staying close to investors. Uh, me being here is part of this effort to speak about the market, to answer any, uh, answer any questions. We do realize that um, we need to educate um, educate investors about the Saudi market and also educate ourselves about investor needs. And this is an ongoing effort. And every time we think we achieve something, we will need to achieve it even more as we uh, develop with time. The simplest ways of measuring success perhaps for any stock exchange are, is either the, the, the nominal level at which it's trading at, the market capitalization, mm -hmm. we can show that as well, you've talked about the number of qualified foreign investors. We could talk about the number of listings. But let me ask you, what metrics do you use to determine how much success you're having and whether you've achieved your objectives? Um, the, one of our major objectives is to institutionalize the market. So the number of institutional investors matter. Um, today, uh, it's uh, somewhere uh, between 70 and 75 percent. Also, the um, uh, amounts that is uh, invested by foreign investors is another metric we look at. Market capitalization, number of companies listed as well. You know, Saudi Arabia uh, has uh, witnessed listings um, more than all the other uh, GCC countries combined. We have listed in the last two years uh, almost 37 um, uh, new listings in the market. We have added um, um, more asset, uh, asset classes other than uh, just public companies. Now we have REITs, we have uh, a small and uh, medium enterprise market, uh, a secondary market called NUMU that today has 10 listings. Uh, we're working on um, creating a hub and a flat platform for uh, people to innovate and have products through also uh, creating our derivatives market, which is one of the 14 initiatives uh, that is um, um, uh, part of the financial sector development program mm -hmm. where Tadawil has to deliver on for Vision 2030. Since Saudi Arabia was included in the FTSE Russell Emerging Market mm. Index in the spring, March, I March, believe, yes. and then MSCI in June, what have you seen happen to um, foreign investment flows? Uh, it has accelerated, um, and uh, the market also uh, have been uh, moving. It's a bit more volatile now. We do expect that this will continue as the implementation of the inclusion happens, which is uh, going to take place in 2019. Now, as you might imagine, there are people here who may themselves already be investors in Saudi Arabia, and if they're not, they're probably people whom you would like to invest in Saudi Arabia, or perhaps to do business in Saudi Arabia. They have questions, and I'm going to get to one of them. 
some of these people, it's fair to say, see what Mohammed bin Salman has been doing. They see reforms taking place. They may, in fact, be very encouraged by some of the reforms taking place. At the same time, they also see a country that has arrested dozens of dissidents, a country that a year, almost a year ago, um, rounded up and imprisoned for a period of time hundreds of businessmen and government officials in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, a country that most recently, as you're well aware, has been accused, uh, rightly or wrongly, of murdering a journalist on foreign soil, Jamal Khashoggi, and they're unsure that that country is a country in which they can feel secure putting their money for any length of time. What do you tell these people? Well, um, a lot of developments have been happening. Um, you mentioned the um, uh, Ritz incident. Uh, what wouldn't any investor want when uh, the country is taking action against uh, um, um, dissent opposition? No, not the dissent opposition. Mm. Um, Corruption. 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 Sorry. Pardon me. Against corruption, and uh, they have started at the top. That actually should uh, um, encourage people that things are becoming more transparent. What we have seen is, at the time, expectedly, we we witnessed some volatility, but foreign flow came even more after the, that uh, incident. So uh, we have um, a long way uh, to go in uh, social uh, reform and economic reform. But what we know for sure is th that we are um, executing a vision that is extremely ambitious, that um, everybody in Saudi Arabia today, whether a man or a woman, have a golden opportunity to shine in building their country. And uh, that's what we're committed to, opening up uh, our market is one of them, making sure investor protection is there is one of them. We're now in the third version of our QFIs, uh, in the, uh, the Qualified Foreign Investor Program. And uh, that's a result of uh, di direct uh, dialogue with uh, uh, investors, and we're going to continue on doing that. One of the things any emerging market is up against when trying to court foreign capital is the notion that free markets can't exist without a free exchange of ideas. What do you think? I think there are many opportunities in the Saudi market, and it is untapped yet. Um, we have um, great companies. We have some of them listed today, and we aim to ha to make much more available going forward. In terms of um, having uh, free capital there, um, Saudi Arabia is a uh, is a country that have never stopped capital uh, from uh, flowing in uh, into the into the country or out of it. And um, um, I'm sure by opening up the market, we commit to uh, international practices in this. You're an example of how far Saudi Arabia has come. Uh, needless to say, you're a woman, but not just a woman. You're a woman who occupies a powerful, influential, prominent role in the Saudi Arabian financial system in the economy. How do the social reforms we've been talking about fit into the economic in financial picture. Why are they important? Uh, they're very important because they um, empower human capital. We're a country of uh, 30 million uh, people in population. 75% uh, are uh, quite young, below 35 uh, years old. A vision like 2030, empowering uh, everyone to reach their potential, is key in building uh, our economy and our country um, um, with the great leadership uh, that we have today. So um, I think it all starts with human capital and also it ends there. Now, is that about, is it just empowering human capital 
inside Saudi Arabia or is it also attracting human capital from outside Saudi Arabia? Uh, of course, it's doing both. And um, we had uh, previously uh, um, had a discussion also about challenges. So um, one of the main challenges that we face is to have the appropriate talent uh, to execute on this vision. And um, many, in, in many sectors, we have um, uh, already, uh, we have people in, in place from all over the world, experts, um, in, um, for, to deliver a big part of those plans. Also, in the stock exchange today, we have a lot of uh, subject matter experts uh, that do uh, two, for two main objectives. One of them um, is uh, to uh, help uh, uh, build what we want to build. And second is also to train and educate uh, Saudi uh, talent uh, as well. So, uh, of course, we're open and uh, we would, um, uh, opening up the market, as I mentioned before, is a way for us to get closer to the world. And this is one of our main objectives. There's a question from the audience that dovetails nicely with this part of our conversation. If you're trying to attract human capital from abroad, and at the same time, if you're trying to integrate the Saudi uh, capital market and the economy better with the rest of the world, I is there any likelihood of the Saudi market moving to a Monday to Friday trading week? Uh, well, um, there is al always possibilities of things changing. Right now, uh, we are uh, trading in the same uh, way the whole region trade, which is from Sunday. To, uh, to Thursday. So um, if um, we have changed it from before, we used to trade from Saturday to Wednesday. So I can't say it will never happen, but today the uh, days traded in the market is in line with the whole region. This is not an official polling question, so I'm going to ask for a, a show mm -hmm. of hands. How many of you here in the room have been to Riyadh? So a few. So you have a sense for what I'm about to ask, Sarah. Tell me what life is like in Riyadh today compared to what it was like, say, five years ago or 10 years ago. Very interesting question. As a, as a Saudi citizen, of course, uh, my view would be a little bit different than if you come uh, from uh, outside Saudi. Um, I can only refer to my own personal experiences. I have uh, started in this industry uh, by working in uh, Samba Financial Group, which is the ex city bank in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this was back in 2002. Uh, I was the only woman in the whole investment department. And uh, today, um, if I, um, when I joined uh, Tadawal as their chair, 24% uh, of uh, Tadawal employees are women. So there is a huge difference uh, right now. Um, uh, first, uh, education. Uh, second, opportunities. Uh, third, empowerment. Um, and uh, you can see this across um, uh, many sectors. Uh, some were more fl friendlier in having uh, women like education or healthcare, but also in a, in a sector that is as difficult as investment banking, where we see the whole world anyway struggle by empowering women um, there. I think uh, Saudi have do has done uh, great considering uh, the length of women education and the length of uh, time that women has actually worked in this sector also in Saudi Arabia. Is your goal for Tadawal and your goal for NCB, the, the, um, the capital markets firm mm -hmm. that, uh, where you're the CEO, yes. to achieve parity 50-50? Uh, men and women? Uh, well, my, I always uh, believe in merit, okay? However, I believe in equal opportunity. What's happening today is naturally people coming into the market are almost 50-50 between male and female. Uh, after that, it's on, on uh, each uh, uh, person individually to uh, find uh, their way and uh, develop their career. Uh, so what we really uh, focus on is to make sure that um, we have uh, diversity uh, from the beginning. And um, this is evident by, uh, for example, NCB Capital last year. Um, we have our new hires uh, were 45% uh, women. Uh, and they're mostly educated in Saudi Arabia um, in finance. 
the decision by the Crown Prince to allow women to drive in Saudi Arabia attracted a lot of attention. Are you driving yet? Uh, I'm not driving yet because um, uh, I need to learn how to drive first. And there is a very, very long uh, wait list in driving schools. Really? And so, yes, yes, for women. Uh, there are because a lot of uh, a lot of them are actually applying for licenses. So uh, this is one of uh, my plans for two, uh, 2019, and I'm in the queue. There's maybe 100,000 uh, people uh, there. Yeah. We'll go back to nuts and bolts for a couple of minutes here. The Crown Prince, in an interview with my colleague Stephanie Flanders last week, said the kingdom is still committed to taking Aramco public by 2021. Is the plan still to list shares of Aramco on the Darawal? Um, well, uh, the company has uh, said it uh, that uh, Tadawal is uh, is one of the mar uh, one of the stock exchanges that uh, Aramco is considering. Um, I don't think uh, anything uh, changed in that. Uh, we are ready for whenever the issuer is ready, and um, uh, if it's 2020, if it's 2021, we're here. What more do you need to do? to achieve your goal of becoming a regional capital market, to persuade companies based in the UAE, for example, or in Kuwait, uh, to list in Saudi Arabia instead of listing in their home countries? Uh, we already or in have addition to listing in their home countries? We already have applications. One of the um, major attractions is uh, market liquidity. Um, of course, uh, being part of uh, the Emerging Market Index uh, also uh, will encourage those companies to be listed in, uh, in, this, uh, in our exchange. And uh, we are uh, uh, working uh, with them. Uh, the making the regulations as well, uh, I know that the CMA is working with the, the, capital, market authority. the capital Market Authority, working with its equivalent in all the GCC countries to have uh, uh, closer uh, regulations as well and all, all those um, are steps towards uh, making uh, us ready uh, for whenever an issuer wants to uh, list in Saudi. In addition to liquidity, what else would you say are the advantages to listing on Tadawal over listing on any other exchange uh, in the Middle East or in North Africa? Uh, we are uh, by far the largest. Uh, we have uh, great technology. We are developing. Uh, we are investing a lot in um, uh, making uh, our market um, uh, more accessible. Um, uh, so it, it is the natural place uh, for any company in the Middle East or North Africa um, that wants uh, access uh, to capital to be. And this is what uh, we're working on. You've talked about the dialogue that you maintain with foreign investors. Yes. What do they want to see more of? Uh, in the beginning, uh, they were uh, they wanted to understand uh, um, purely operational issues. Uh, then they wanted to understand the regulation. Uh, today, um, I think um, uh, they're fairly happy with this, and the evidence is uh, that they've voted for us to uh, be included. Um, now I think they want uh, more products, and that's what we're uh, delivering. We're uh, going to start with Index Futures in, uh, 2000, uh, in uh, early 2019, and that is already um, announced uh, by uh, the exchange. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, we are working on uh, making Tadawal the platform and the hub for innovation for market participants, whether they are uh, investment banks, um, um, to, to deliver needs of investors. What other kinds of products should people expect to see in the years to come? Um, we are uh, now creating our CCP, derivatives, uh, mm -hmm. derivatives in uh, all its kinds. And um, first, as I mentioned, we will be futures uh, early next year. And then an options market? Uh, yes, everything. We're, uh, we have a full plan and a commitment. We have established uh, RCCP uh, earlier this year. Uh, we have, uh, um, uh, it will take a couple of years to set up. However, we have already um, uh, signed a, a post trade with NASDAQ, which uh, they are the providers for our technology. Um, so we're ready. Are there any other changes, enhancements that you could make that would appeal to foreign investors, such as more 
an expanded list of reporting requirements, for example, that encompass all forms of what people might consider materiality, um, filings in English, for example, which is something that they can only find on a limited basis at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is um, uh, a very important question. Uh, we have uh, done a lot uh, to increase transparency um, uh, with listed companies. We are actually conducting workshops with CEOs and CFOs of listed, listed company to educate about investor relations. Uh, we have um, uh, issued um, uh, a guide for that also for companies and we support them uh, doing it. Uh, we accompany uh, companies uh, around the world uh, in conferences to be next to them and uh, making sure uh, that uh, they are uh, communicating with investors. And uh, the, the good thing is that companies are realizing the benefits of having foreign investors also as uh, shareholders. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, we have high level of transparency. English is obviously very important. Uh, we are on the way to have that available. Many of the companies are now publishing in uh, uh, English anyway. Our uh, financial statements are uh, IFRS based. So um, I think uh, from that perspective, information is available. And if you could pick one thing, what would you say is your single biggest challenge? Uh, as I mentioned before, it's always about human capital and having enough time in the day to execute <laughs> on what we want uh, to execute. This is, uh, the, this is our main challenge. Well, I think I speak for everybody by saying we share that challenge with you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking Sarah Al-Suhemi for being here with us. Thank today. you.